All right, so we're here with Nick once again. This is 102 Beller. We finally got it rented, so we got it, we got it fixed and rented. Let's go do a quick look at it and see where we are. This was the trashed house. This was the trash house where they put the rabbit turds and everything else. They scooped it down into the air conditioning duct. We'll talk about everything we had to do. It's been it's been a fiasco. I got a couple of things I still need to have them clean up for me, but but I think they're not moving in for another week or two. So if you if you do not remember what this house looks like, go to the previous video on 102. Maybe I can get Nick to put it in. The who knows maybe he'll do it maybe he won't <laughs> so as we walk in you know so we have had we had a tremendous amount of trouble getting the animal smell out of his house been abnormally hard i mean it was so abnormally hard we painted the whole house again this past week we took two layers of paint we we painted it the first time come back and it still had an odor and then we painted it a second time and i'm not smelling any urine or anything like that but you know, it's just been a mess so so we came in we ripped all the flooring up couple of places we had to pull the subflooring up and then we pulled the subflooring up we replaced that all new flooring throughout the whole house we had to replace probably maybe a third of the doors in the house because they were broken and punched out i still got two dents in this refrigerator we were talking about whether we were going to replace it oh, yeah, right and there. i let me turn the light on and two right here yeah and i just made a decision that i was right. not going to replace it because of that so we, we're going to hold it for, for another round but you know it looks good right these are the original countertops yeah we didn't change the countertops so we had to replace i think they had to replace one of the one of the um the doors on the counters on the cabinets but that was it so then we got they haven't come in and done a final cleaning on this house yet either this is the master bedroom nice bedroom so when i when i rehab this house this was the garage not a garage it was a carport when i raised the house up because i raised this house up full foot to get it out of flood zone right. this was the carport when i went that right there was the original house the original house was that wall right there so no, i did actually it was thinning it further out to give me a little bit more square footage and that is the kitchen it was too small so now that's the kitchen and that's this bathroom back here also so it this was an extension too. It didn't go back this far. So this is the, so that will have to be replaced. I guess so, yeah. Um, I haven't been in this house at all since it, since it was done. So I, I didn't know that, but this mirror definitely has to be. Okay, so I didn't know they made doors this tiny. Yep. It is a door though. That's what you wanted to do at the other place. Yeah. That is a tiny door. And this is just two walk-in closets, his and hers. Is this technically the master bedroom? Did you do the master bedroom? Is there any warping right there or am I just going crazy? He just laid that floor, they just laid it. So it made, okay. it, it's a floating floor, so it'll, it'll come out. So that's the same wall as you got in the kitchen. So that's where the end of the house used to be. And these were the two bedrooms we were having the most amount of trouble with, with the odor. So I don't, yeah, this is where there was literally, yeah, it was, it was bad. So th these two, this bedroom is fairly small, but it's a, it's a bedroom. Are there any sanitary tests or inspections that you can do since this? No. So what we did, we pulled, we pulled all the floor up and then we got an oil-based kills. Oil-based kill? Yeah. So they got a floor that's called, they got a, a paint that's called kills. It's a good primer paint and it does a lot of hiding and seals up good. So we took and painted all the floors, all the subflooring, whatever was bad we replaced, but we painted everything else. That way if there was anything in it, we could kind of, we could hold those odors out of the house. So we sealed it up. That way, if it happens again, nothing, it won't penetrate that, that old base paint, and we can go from there. Once we did that, then we pulled all the baseboard off of the house also. Okay, yeah. Because if you got a dog that hikes his leg up, or in their case, a rabbit that hikes their leg up and pees on the wall, then it runs behind that board if it don't have a good caulk joint on it. Mm -hmm. And then it just stays there and stagnates. You can't get it out until you pull that board off and paint. So it's important if you if you if you're building something like that it's, it's always important to make sure that your baseboards are caulked top and bottom to keep anything from getting under them or through them. and that's always a good thing good but i think if y'all go back and look at where the house was before we started and where the house is now it's pretty much not the same house huh it's not no you definitely repaired they got a smell pretty thing on the on that inside that vent i probably need to pull it out because i think it smells overpowering as far as that's concerned it's not a, i mean it's not gonna last forever it's kind of like yeah. a car thing and strong for two days and <laughs> yeah. non-existent but yep yeah. any questions so it took you how much to repair this all in all we're we're i think we're closer to forty thousand dollars in repair. forty grand to repair one year yeah. two so he's got some touch up cleaning to do here on the floors where he's got some paint and looks like this right here may need another coat of paint on this clock that's an irritating thing for me here's a good picture there's no reason why somebody comes in and installs that on a house so we 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 did the construction on this house so there's no reason why when somebody does that that they can't come in and trim around it and make it look really nice but instead because it's behind a dryer and nobody can see it they just leave it there and and it doesn't affect anything 
And the truth of the matter is it doesn't affect anything. But I think that that's what separates a good construction person from a okay construction person. It's kind of like the word integrity. Integrity is more about what do you do when you're by yourself and no one else is looking. It's not when somebody's looking at me, am I going to do the right thing? The question is when I'm by myself and no one is looking, am I going to do the right thing? That's my thoughts in the construction world also. I want people that if I'm here or if I'm not here, they're going to do the right thing regardless and they're not ever going to cover up anything. Because I pay for a top-notch job. I pay for somebody to do perfect work. That's what I want. I don't want anything less than that. If they want to give me something less than that, they just need to work for somebody other than me. Because that, that's, that is not what we want. Nick wanted me to talk about this lockbox right here. So, so this is just a realtor lockbox. Um, we own a real estate company also. So we will use these lockboxes. Any realtor can walk up to this box. We can give them a code to get into it. They can they can easily get inside of the box. And it takes what eight to ten number pin is what I had to push yeah. in that box to get in there. Decent little so phone. It was it was a long it was a long pin to get into it. But just a little bit of security makes it easy for everybody can get into something. And I'm not giving you a code. Like one, two, three, four, and then every time you want to get into the house, you do one, two, three, four, and you can get into it. And then somebody else sees you do it. Now everybody knows the code. This code changes every single time someone opens and closes that lock. That's what's really so. And I can I can walk up, I can dial a phone number, I can put that pin number into the phone number that, that goes with that lock. And when I when I give when I put this number into that phone that phone number, then it gives me a code to get into automatically. So it sent me a so I have a I have a lock box number on my phone to get into it. And then whenever I do it, it tells me, it says push the enter button, then enter this code right here, then push the enter button again and unlocks. How much was it? I mean, if you know off the top of your head. My wife, my wife, but I don't know that stuff. <laughs> and my wife does not discuss money with me. So she does not discuss what anything costs because she knows if she tells me how much it costs, I'm gonna say no. Hey, that's the man's job, right? <laughs>